there are a few things one needs in order to have a war. One of the most notable ones would be anything that explodes or propels itself at high speeds towards the enemy. The production of munitions, explosives, and in large numbers, and in an uninterrupted flow, was paramount for Germany during World War II. And equally of key importance is that the enemy did not find out where they were making the munitions, as any kind of bombing would result in a catastrophe. In Poland, in a forest, they managed to do both. 23 square kilometers of production space. Yeah, listen to that. In 1500 buildings linked by 40 kilometers of rail tracks and 360 kilometers of roads. And from the air, you saw none of it. Still today, it's practically impossible to see any of the remaining buildings. And in 1945, when the Russians took the place, they were almost completely surprised. Even a fake factory site, however, had been constructed three kilometers from the main site. In 1944, the Allies did have one bombing raid, but no damage was occurred. Towards the end of the war, over 20,000 people worked here at the same time. This factory was producing munitions, ammunition, aerial bombs, and rockets, including research into new, more destructive warheads for the V-2 and the Nebelwerfer which was also tested at a local range here. The plant was performing hand loading for air bombs, manufacturing electrical ballast and fuses, but in a remote and secret part, expanded in 1943-44, there were developed unprecedented missiles, inflated with compressed air, which gave them a blast radius almost of two kilometers. Of course, these facilities were blown up by the retreating Germans in January 45, two days before the Russians took the site. One of the most impressive things to keep in mind when we walk through this extremely complicated complex is that the Germans had their plans for construction ready so they could begin building as soon as the battle for Poland was over. They had planned ahead. And the second thing is that we are seeing all of these buildings in this huge complex today, yet it is only 1% of what was actually here at the time. The amount of planning and detail needed here was staggering. I have never ever seen anything like this. It's almost surreal with the different levels and buildings and above ground tunnels. I literally have to show it to you for you to get the picture. And since, of course, the Russians took all of the machinery after the war, we need a little help navigating what is here today. In a few of the buildings, a museum was created to memorize the victims, and of the historians here is going to give us a heads up on the basis. We are in Poland at the Dach Factory, the explosive museum that was, during the time of the war, one of the biggest munitions production plants that existed, that was made. It was completely camouflaged, had lots of forced laborers that worked here, and most of the production went off to the Eastern Front. It's a large, large area with a lot of different structures, lots of fencing, lots of tunnels, and production that we will see. I think it's important to come here and see exactly what a verified munitions plant looked like during World War II. Now walking through this area makes it rather hard to give an idea of what is what here. However, this is obviously an above ground tunnel from this house under the road. This is interesting. This is an above ground tunnel. I have never seen I thought the whole idea with tunnels were that they were supposed to be underground. So there's the walkway of the above ground tunnel. And then just to prove my point, comes out under the road the other way. And it just continues into the forest. I guess we're going to have to revisit this tunnel to find out why. Very interesting.
this map that you can see here is only 1% of the whole area that was used here by Nazi Germans in the Second World War. Uh, the whole factory has got 25 kilometers square. Uh, we count that they got here almost one and a half thousand buildings, uh, 40 kilometers of roads, of railways, for uh, 400 of roads, and through the whole history of the Second World War, work here almost 40,000 of workers. On one day, on all shifts, almost 10,000 of workers. This is the second production line that, was, that wasn't used in the Second World War because the first production line that was exactly here was really used and they made nitroglycerin that was only a part of explosive materials that was used here to make ammunition. We count that 30% of each bullet used on the Eastern Front was made here in this factory. So the mo most important building is this building here and here, as you can see, two lines. This is the nitration building, so the building where they made nitroglycerin. And then the nitroglycerin went to the next building when it was uh, separated from water and put it new clean water. With the new clean water, it went to the next building when it was mixed with nitrocellulose that was brought here from other parts of the factory. And the nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin been mixed. The gunpowder was transported to the next building. Here we've got rails and by train, those explosive materials being transported to the next part of the factory where they made smokeless powder and this smokeless powder being transported to the next part where they elaborated so put it into shells into bullets. Everywhere in the forest are protective dirt mounds that's been built up to shield surroundings by explosions that might take place by accident in the middle. Sign of munition production and storage just a lot of built up earth walls, walls, and walls built for directional accidental explosions. More on that. Again, it's camouflage, you see, trees on the roofs, trees everywhere covering all this up. The Russians did not even know this was here. Just in case you were wondering what was inside Building 1101, this is... They've been uh, making here uh, tests with the fuel for, for uh, V1s and explosive materials, but uh, the most important thing that is uh, ammunition for flag 37, 88 and 10.5. And if you ever wanted to know where to find that next guard tower for your yard, well, they're all laying here. I wonder if they'll sell me one. All the guard towers, well, some of them, that has been sitting around the perimeter of this place. And here they all are. These are all guard towers. Interesting, in front of one of the old buildings. And you'll see a lot of pillars throughout this area. A lot of fencing, a lot of designated areas. Because if you worked in one area, you were not really welcome in most of the others. There's a lot of these. And just for the hell of it, I will say, for the first time in a month of researching and visiting locations in Europe, this is the first one that doesn't involve stairs or mountains, crawling in our deep wet tunnels. Well, so far anyway. But still, you get the idea. Flat ground, I like. I've only been here for some <laughs> 10 minutes and I'm already seeing a lot of similarities between this factory and what I've found out of the Molke factory in Ludwigsdorf near the Henge. And this was verifiable, uh, there's no doubt they produced munitions here, but the technology, the tunnels, the near the ground tunnels between buildings, it's very interesting. But it's, very, it's a very large area, very hard to get a handle on, just walking through it and trying to figure out what is what. Obviously there would be a lot of wells here. Here you see a tunnel come out of the side of the wall and it's elevated here. 
and continues into another building. It's very interesting. This is a very large building. It's very interesting to see them using tunnels that goes above ground and underground. Very interesting concepts they've been using for the construction. Now, despite only being able to see about 1% of what really was here, what I'm going to do in this rather long episode is take you through the complex as we can see it today. And we'll talk to the experts who will then talk us through and tell us about the process, about the time of the war, the prisoners that work here, the sabotage, and how everything actually was connected, as far as we know, because there are still quite a few blanks and especially when it comes to some of the special research projects that took place in buildings that were destroyed or we certainly can't see today. I am very curious as to the output and usage of electricity the plant had. There were also two huge boiler houses. The combined heat and power plants of the two boiler houses were constructed in 1940. The boiler rooms were here to supply the lines of denitration and nitric acid concentrations with high pressure steam, and also to heat the production buildings. The largest plant, EC3, was equipped with three turbine sets. These units were fueled by coal. Also, power from nearby power plants were run into this huge complex, and one of these transformer stations is still in use today. And a couple of small for oil. I wonder what's on those. This whole factory was complete, uh, completely history for, for Poles and for British and for the Alliance and for the uh, Soviet Union because it was really important to hide this factory uh, in a forest. As you can see, we are in the middle of a, of a forest here in a camouflage, so no one will know nothing about this. And up there, something else. the power plant. So you can see there are large dirt mounds, earth walls protecting every one of the structures from each other, from explosions and so on. Over there is the power building and here on the other side there are two more mounts for very large tanks next to this building. I would imagine this is diesel storage. Look at how brilliant this is for a camouflage. Got the trees next to it, trees on top of it. Even today, if you do a Google Maps search here, fly over Google Maps or some other map program, it's very hard to see. Electrical mountings that we are somewhat used to seeing. And a lot of red brick. A lot of reinforced cement and concrete. There used to be a little platform back here. And we have... Oh, wow! I know what this is. This is another generator building. Wow! Yes. It is. Damn, so they have two of these. Okay. This is in a little bit more of disrepair than the other one. This is the transformer station where power would come from the main power station. Yeah. And then from here it would get divided out to the individual manufacturing buildings. Are there, so there are tunnels under here where the cables run? Not sure it's 
tunnels. Most cables were just under the ground. The electricity comes from a huge uh, power plant mm -hmm. to different zones and then it's separated to all buildings. Oh, transformer buildings. Uh, yes, transformer buildings. Okay. Uh, on this side we've got three of those. Still, we use one of them. So this is the original building? Yeah. And here you've got the number of the building. It's 1562, as you can see. Uh, but in the Second World War, number of the building was 562. After the Second World War, when Poles start again counting those buildings, they just put one in front of the number. Just because you didn't want to do like the Germans did. <laughs> I mean, it is extremely well camouflaged. Now, especially today if you have a little extra overgrowth. But if you deliberately try to camouflage this thing, how much better of a job could you do than letting nature do it? And I'm imagining waterways. Well, it is wet. But here's another building. Well, there's a lot of spiders out here. There's another building right up from the power plant. So there's the fenced off area. And I'm imagining there'll be a lot of those. But this is actually where I was wrong. All these pillars throughout the complex are in order to hold the pipes that transfer all the various liquids here. Well, the door's open. I would feel rude not going in. It's like an invitation, right? Is what a utility tunnel looks like here in the factory. Don't worry if it doesn't light up, I'll get some light for you. Gee, back in a tunnel, shocking. Utility tunnel, power, something, maybe a little slight hoist or rail, and into a room and a ladder up. So this is one of the old munition buildings. Platforms and machinery. All the buildings were located at different heights from one another and openings never lined up. This arrangement prevented chain reactions and possible destruction of the technological lines in the event of any catastrophic disruption at any of the production stages. In addition to that, lines were duplicated so to increase the likelihood of keeping production going if it occurs a breakdown or a catastrophic failure. Staff could use multi-branch escape tunnels equipped with bunkers, and I use that term lightly and you'll see why. Basins, platforms, were foundations for something that went all the way up there. Now you can see this is all the way of mixing the explosives at various stages that we'll hear all about. So this is the conditions persons were working in different floors separated. It's a very sturdy building on one side. See these holes go all the way through to the roof.
The history of the DAG company began in 1863 when Alfred Nobel developed a method of producing nitroglycerin on an industrial scale. By 1875, there was 14 factories set up in 12 countries, and in 1876, the company was transferred into a joint stock company, which eventually took the name Namit Aktion Gesellschaft. The Third Reich had a total of 80 explosive factories, 32 of which belonged to the DAG, 27 warfare factories, and 241 ammunition production plants. After the outbreak of the war, the plants expanded and 1944, DAG produced a quarter of the total production of military assets for the Third Reich. Here at the factory, it's estimated that they produced enough powder for 20 million rifle bullets and 26,000 artillery shells every day. So all the floors look different. Different holes in the floor. And what makes this so fascinating is the ground here is all fairly flat, yet after walking up four flights of stairs, I am now on the level of the ground level, which I thought I had just left behind, which was then a valley. But up here we're in line with another series of buildings and tunnels, which will be in line with another building and another hill. You literally walk up and down without realizing the different levels and heights of these buildings. Since the war, many of the buildings have been torn down or put to other use, and still munitions are being made for the military in other parts that we were not allowed to see. But still in the forest, there are several bunkers, buildings, and many other structures to explore for the next time. There was multi-level earth embankments for safety, and in order to reduce the effect of possible explosions, several types of buildings were built. One with a light edifice, was mainly warehouses and bunkers. Light buildings were made of bricks and surrounded by earth embankments. In case of any explosion, the entire blast would be directed upwards. On the other hand, bunker-type buildings, used when explosive risks were assessed as high, Considered as a quadrilateral edifice were three walls and a thick reinforced concrete ceiling. In this case, the architectural concept directed the blast to the fourth side, i.e. an exhaust wall made of wood or glass, the debris being blocked by the earth embankment outside. Such reinforced buildings could withstand the burst of the shock wave and still not fall apart, although as we'll see, they did crack a little. Now I'm all of a sudden above ground? How did that happen? 
I walked up four floors, and now I'm above ground. Because I walked through a tunnel. So I walked up four floors into a tunnel, and now I'm just on the surface. Well, that's interesting. Let's go back in the tunnel. What a fascinating place. So we can't wait for someone to tell me how this works or what's what. So all these tunnels are connecting the buildings. And I wonder why. So the, the roof broke open. Obviously there would not have been an open roof there. And there's a tunnel to the next building. And then the building underneath that, four floors down. That over the low light, don't you? I feel I'm going upwards. Just five, six, seven degrees, not much. with explosives but this place was never bombed because they didn't know it was there and you had all the electrical attachments well this is the rebar I'm talking about that thing interesting and I feel fresh air coming from here a lot of pipes and things and I remember being told what that was once different types of powders does not mix well These are the cleanest tunnels I've been in on this trip. There's a parallel tunnel running next to this one. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? And out. There must be a turn right there. Why would this thing be right here parallel to this? It was a fairly thick, fairly thick wall, and then we're out somewhere. We're out into what looks like a gallery tower, which I'm guessing is ventilation. I'm guessing that's ventilation. And we came out here. And there's a building above where we were that is not connected to that tunnel. And here's another, that's not a wall, that's another tunnel. Going in a different direction. I 
And there is, I think, the museum building. The main building. Which leads me to question. What is this? There's three tunnels. One there. One there. And one over there. There then be one up there, and those round arches in red brick, very similar to what we saw in Ludwigsdorf. All right, let's go in here then. So there's a lot of tunnels pointing out of here. So what was here? And what's in here? This is the profile view of a very thin wall. So if there was a detonation, then it would blow out this way. It would blow that way and possibly into the tunnel. That would then funnel the explosion this way, the explosion that way. So if here was, an explosion in here. It would funnel past this wall into this wall and out that tunnel and out to the side. Which means this was also a mission production room with interesting basins. This could be the brick wall to the tunnel I was in. And here's the other tunnel up. So you would funnel explosions out in a lot of different directions. So whatever was made in here 
seemed very volatile. On the way from the barracks, the workers would be searched for anything that could set off an explosion or used for sabotage. Cigarettes, matches, pieces of metal, all were taken from the prisoners, and for good reason, as the resistance did infiltrate the plant and acts of sabotage were occurring, even if they were only small and had little or no bearing on long-term production. Now there was some sabotage and there was some did an explosion in here, some things went wrong. This might be one of them. Because this whole house is just a little bit crooked. This could be one of those where something went horribly wrong, and bang. Yes, plenty of Poles, forced, forced laborers, of course. Also war prisoners, uh, British, French. Uh, also we've got uh, people from Soviet Union. Uh, and thousands of Hungarian Jewish women brought here from concert lager in Sutov. In this building in uh, the, uh, 1944, uh, there was an explosion. And after the explosion, the whole process was uh, stopped for just few weeks they push a pipe from this building where they produce nitroglycerin on the second production line to the first production line and after three months the first production line again start to work. We've got the explosion on the first production line in 44 in this building so the nitration building after the explosion they just push a pipe from the nitration building from the second production line and after three months the uh, whole production on the first production line gets back again uh, so this is really important to duplicate those two lines. So if we get any problem, if we get any emergency or explosion, the process can go day by day on 100%. After the explosion, all workers that worked in this building, of course, died. Uh, but the building wasn't damaged so much. It depends on the structure of the building because it's made from full concrete. Uh, there was also a uh, sabotage here in uh, 44 when German engineers uh, from, from Berlin came for a visitation. Then they stopped the mixers, the heat was really going up and we've got an explosion. And of course, the most important thing, those Nazis just died there in this building. But many, many more small, let's say small sabotages made by um, just casual workers and uh, they just just wanted to know, for example, uh, stop machines or uh, put some put some metal part inside. You've got gunpowder inside, and of course you've got spark and a fire and an explosion. And sometimes uh, it's a history from poles because they need to transport uh, explosive materials in bags from one building to another one. And they've got some leaflets on those bags with the date of each day. So when the Germans been looking, they've been just transporting those bags. And when the Germans just been, let's say, went uh, to the toilet, they take, took the bags back again and take out those leaflets and put new ones with the same date. So the production was really, let's say, smaller than it should be. A lot of the acts of sabotage, like you said, if you, you, you turn off one piece of machinery, the other one overheats. And the, that would usually result in the people doing that sabotage would die themselves, wouldn't yeah. it? The, the guy that stopped this machine when the um, German engineers came here, he died in this accident. Yes, the end of a tunnel. And then here's the tunnel I was in a minute ago. Yeah. Ventilation on the roof of that one. 
big bunker, possibly the main building at the end there. So, if I go this way, on top of the tunnel I was just at, I should get to the roof of the building I was in. But I'm not going to jump that hole, so that's not going to happen. So we take this tunnel instead. So there's another tunnel. So we take that one. Because it's there. <laughs> this is so interesting with tunnels above ground. Also, it's a little crooked. And it is coming downwards on a downward slope. Tilting a little bit to the right, and I wonder how many of these had catastrophic events in them. camera crooked. The building is just a little, little crooked. And here you see it was actually built to come apart. Very interesting. See this type of design I haven't seen anywhere in the Malka buildings. Came around there, ventilation. So we go here. I'm inside the big building. These are the rooms where the glass had metal wires in it and would explode outwards into this earth embankment here. See how that whole wall, anything went boom in here, it would go out that way. So here we have a building that was used to clean water that was used in the nitration building because the whole nitration process is looks like this we've got glycerin that was brought in barrels we've got sulfuric and nitric acid that came to the nitration building in pipes there was a machine called nitrator that mixed those things and we've got nitroglycerin then the nitroglycerin went to another machine that was called separator that separates acids from the nitroglycerin and then nitroglycerin went to washing glass columns uh, and was washed by hot and cold water. And in that water, you can have few parts of nitroglycerin. So the water from those columns come here to this building on two cascades and slowly swim through those because nitroglycerin is more heavier than water. It was at the bottom of those cascades. The water again comes again to the whole process and nitroglycerin can be transported to the place where they've been uh, mixing nitroglycerin with new clean water. So not a single drop of nitroglycerin will be waste. And this building is also a one that uh, can be explosion inside. So that's why it's made from concrete. Uh, we've got this glass wall. Uh, if we get an explosion hill, the whole blast will go just through that wall. Uh, also, the ceiling goes up and every corner in this building is round, so the building won't be destroyed if we get a huge explosion here. Uh, the same thing is with the nitration building and the building of stabilization where they just mix the nitroglycerin with water. Uh, this is the most important thing. We got buildings uh, that are, let's say, made from concrete and bricks and from full concrete where they produced and or used nitroglycerin. So somebody will be observing a process in here, which means there's a way into that room. And here's 
be identical. Oh. So this is an identical. This is the room parallel to it. You see the other wall on the other side. Clearly directional for the blast. And here you have shutters. There's actually shutters in this. I mean, if there's an explosion, these little shutters are probably not going to help you. And how do I get in there? That's where I came from. So, how do I get into those rooms? Oh, very strange. I have honestly no idea what building I'm in. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, so there's a parallel. Room right next to it. I just came out of this building on top of which, of course, there's ventilation and more of it. And then I come down here and I see two more identical entrances. And I am wondering if they're going to lead me into the observation rooms. I had actually thought that this direction would lead me into the pit. This is so interesting. Oh, and it does. This does lead me into the pit. Without the window, so no it doesn't. Is there no window in here? So work was being done in here. And shutters up there. Stairs. Machinery mounts. And blast windows. And I would love to show you an aerial view to get a better idea of how these buildings were laid out. And I tried, and all you can see or trees. So. But the designs and planning of this must really be interesting to see and must have been a lot of work. Hmm. Shutters. Ah. So this is the room I was in. That will blow outwards. Okay. And stairs. This is such an interesting process. This is not small arms. This is explosives for shells or bombs or something bigger. original. That's beautiful. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, I need a hobby, I know, I know. It is just 
one turn after another after another, just to diminish the blast of my face. And this makes a U turn and an L behind there. And then this. is completely separated. And yes, there's a tunnel behind me. I can. And then there's a staircase up. Well, why would I want to go up when I can go down? Sounds like my acting career. Hmm. This must be explained. Well, I understand the price directions. Of course. So, tunnel. Demolished. Beer bottles we can do without. Okay. Now this pipe. and I am way above ground. I am way, way above ground. And there's a room beside me and a drop underneath me. How did I get up here? layout is just fascinating. And see? Here's literally the supports. Here's literally the supports. For what I'm assuming is a tunnel or a room. circling around. This is one of the most fascinating things. I am expecting to go to the left, not the right. Of course, there's going to be a little... There's going to be, of course there is. There's going to be one of these. In this building they mixed nitroglycerin with nitrocellulose. Looks a little bit better condition yeah. than the other one. The nitrocellulose has been brought here from other part of the factory on the highest level here in this building, then throw it on the third level uh, where nitroglycerin came here with water. And there we've got huge mixers. It was mixed, the nitroglycerin with nitrocellulose, and it's been thrown down to the next level where we've got huge uh, centrifuge machines. Exactly as the same thing as whirlpools now, on a huge speed the water was thrown out and a little bit wet gunpowder been thrown to the next level, to bags and transported to the next building. And this building has also got a risk that 
an explosion will be here. So as you can see, we've got the blast walls made from wood and glass. And those parts made from wood, as you can see here, are original. And the building got three parts. So the first one, stairs, the second one, and the third one that was kept in case of any emergency. We are on the second production line that was built in case of any emergency. And you've got a part of the building that was made in emergency of emergency, as you can see. So they really need to produce plenty of explosive materials and they need to be 100% sure that the production will go each day. When you said throw, nitroglycerin and throw in the same sentence. It will literally just pour it down? Uh, nah, because when you mix nitroglycerin with nitrocellulose, you've got something like a gunpowder, but it's really sticky and wet, and it won't explode. This is the most important thing. Mixing nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose, it's almost safe. <laughs> of course, we've got the blast walls, uh, because it's not so hard to make explosion of explosive materials, <laughs> uh, but it's not so uh, unstable as nitroglycerin with water. So you could run down a slide yep. into the... Okay, I just love to hear the terms throw and nitroglycerin in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> So I am on top, and these are slides down, chemical, look at this. Why is there a bottom drop? There should have been a wall here. There's just a slide, and down. Maybe the other side will give me an indication what should have been here. I'm sorry, this is just a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. More stairs, more rooms, more floors. So, these are, so chemicals would be up here. This is where the mixing process would start. And then they would continue downwards throughout the building. I do hope they have pictures of what this looked like when they found it. Oh, I'm serious, we are. See, we're all the way on the fourth floor. And I don't know if this is original. It looks like it could have been installed for the door recently. It must be. It must be. Yeah, a lot of it from below. There's attachments throughout the ceiling everywhere. This is how I am. I guess it will be 
you. Nice crane around with window. I mean, yeah, there used to be a wall there. Let me see how high up we are. What a fascinating complex. Here again. So this is the bottom of the slides. And the blast window. Straight under as well. There you are. Actually, something that looks original. Oh, attachments. Wood down. <coughs> and here. A similar setup. There's the hillside. So buildings right next to a bit of a hillside. Said they're too fast, which is not. There's still more holes leading down for this side, which is where I would imagine the finished product would come out. Lots of ceramic pipes uh, that we have certainly seen before. 
Malka and other places. Everywhere I go, there's broken ceramic pipes. Which, from a plumbing point of view, makes sense. It's a good way to transport liquids and other things. So, Grates on these windows, more ceramic. How do I get out for it? This should be how I got out. However, it's not. Yeah. This is the first time I've seen tunnels above ground though. Yes, we've got some above uh, the ground. We, uh, probably they should be under the ground. But this factory was built, this zone was built in 43. So Germans get a little bit from Russians and they need to build this factory really, really quick. So you don't want to lose workers, forced laborers. You just put the uh, sand and grass on the tunnels. You just use the tunnels as they are when they've been built. So in some of the older complexes, there's tunnels, but they're underground yeah. between the buildings. And that's all been destroyed or Most of them, yes. by something else. Which is rather interesting. So, the building I was in is there, and then you have, I don't know what. The beginning of the walkway. That leads into a bricked off wall. in the van. Hmm. This looks more like drainage. Does not look like what we've seen in Lower Silesia at all. This whole facade was literally made to just blow out blast windows. This entire facade was designed to blow outwards only, damaging this area and into this hill here. I cannot wait to find out what they actually built here. Wow. And it's well camouflaged. 100 meters from it, you can barely see it. But you can see the next one. That looks different. 
and this honestly looked like the skeleton of one of the above ground tunnels. I don't really know what else to call it. Fascinating skeletons of things. And of course, things hanging by threads. We have seen that at the Molka plant right above us a number of times. So, what is this? Platform for generators. I would imagine. of generators could be on both sides so there's building on that side as well as this side well, the roof reinforced enough for trees Yeah, this wall is looks new. Looks like something just put up to keep people like me out. I've heard that song before, haven't we? Even the little walkway. Camouflaged with trees. On top or bushes, I see this. And then just because you think I'm only out here looking for ruins. I find the most interesting things in the middle of nowhere. One of the coolest restored Yamahas I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Have a nice day. I figured it's a World War II empty munitions plant. Lots of bunkers, a lot of production facilities that are empty, roads hidden under trees. This is one of the most fascinating areas I've been. And I even find a cool motorcycle. Yay! There's a broken pillar. And one that's upright. Even the pillars blend in with the trees. Leading down to the factory down there. Ventilation tower. Yep, because now you are staying on the top, on the top of a tunnel. And this is one of the old preparation buildings? This is the building similar to this one that we've been before. This is from the second production line and the main building our reception is in the second uh, first production line. So we are in front of the nitration building from the second production line. What is really important here that in this building worked four workers. If something will go wrong, they just use this tunnel as an escape tunnel, they just went through this tunnel, run from through him, and just run here. Catch one of those supports that you can see and hold how many strength he got so the blast won't throw him somewhere in the forest. Of course, it's only a psychological thing because nitroglycerin explodes in a, less than a second. So he need to have time to just run through this tunnel, run here, hold the support and pray that he will still be alive. Uh, as I said to you, 
on the first protection line there was an explosion in a building similar to this one, no one survived. So it's only a psychological thing that you will feel comfortable in your work. Yes, there's, there's no warning with nitroglycerin, is there? Yeah. So this was the bunker? Yes. And this was for electrical? Yes, because there was a chance that um, an engineer that was, for him it was forbidden to go inside the building because he was too Import. precious. Uh, he can just go here to this little, let's say, chamber and look on all the stuff that they've got in the building. So did they have cameras and monitors or...? Uh, they've got something like pipes and clocks and he can see the color, temperature and pressure of nitroglycerin that was inside the building. So the engineer would be here? Yeah. And everyone else would be working in there? Inside in the building. It is a pipe. It's a cable. Well, it's cable. Yeah, but this would be the electrical and yeah. this would be the information. The nitration building, all floor is covered by, was, was covered by lead because it's a really soft metal and if someone that worked in the building let's say lose his hammer or something that was metal and it fall on the ground lead is really soft so it won't be a spark there and of course we don't have the lead, uh, the lead floors because Soviet Union came here and in the next two years they took also the lead floor of course were the tunnel roofs um, waterproofed as well? No only concrete. Only concrete? Yep. We're thinking you put the waterproof and then the dirt and then the soil and then build the trees. Uh, in those that are uh, in the ground, yes, but this tunnel, as you can see, you can see here, it's not so hard. Uh, because, as I said to you just before, they didn't yep. have time to just cover the tunnels. But actually needs to go. Uh, absolutely. Okay, and somewhere here we need to go up. There should be a road little here. There's a pipe sticking up in the ground. Yes, oh, it's a really interesting thing because, as you can see, for example, this tunnel is really in a line, but entrance to this tunnel are from ankles, from this one and this side. And when you just brought here, you want to brought here a few meter pipe, it's, imp it's impossible to make the ankle here at the beginning of the tunnel. So they just use something like this to put those pipes inside the tunnel. I, I've seen that in old castles too. You build an indent so yeah. you can turn wrong things. And this is the pipe. This is the hole for the pipe from above. That's very clever. I'm surprised it's still here, but I think they would move it. But then again, then if you move it, you can't replace things. Yep. And everything was about water, was about liquid, so it was about gravity. So there's another escape room. I just love the little, the little handles. Yeah, and above it you can see a tunnel that was used to transport acids. Acids uh, to the denitration building. Because nitroglycerin can be pumped mechanically. The pressure will cause an explosion. And the nitration buildings on both sides are on the highest hill here in this zone. All buildings, all the rest buildings where nitroglycerin need to end uh, are built definitely lower. So they use the gravity force, so simple, so easy. But you look at it, one thing is looking at the map. When you look at it, it is a complex. Somebody really thought this out. Yes, uh, the most important thing is that um, they build those buildings from a uh, uh, documentary that was made many, many years before they came here. Because in one building of that we I uh, have on our uh, zone, the building is built as it was on the paper, but they didn't use all parts of it. They just, our company came here, built the building, they didn't ask anything, it's, when it's built, it's done, okay, you can work here. But they didn't use 100% the whole structure of the building. It's a denitration building, so here they transport acids. Uh, inside, you've got huge columns that goes from the lowest level to the highest level. Uh, inside the columns we've got uh, sulfuric acid and nitro oxygen. By using overheated steam we got again separated nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Nitric acid went to the other part of this building where it was again cleaned and uh, concentrated and then transported to a storage. The same with sulfuric acid. Uh, in this building 
uh, we've got acid proof uh, floors and on each floor you've got a bath uh, that was also covered by acid proof coffles and inside you've got alkaline water so if something will happen to you and you've got acids on your clothes on your skin you can just jump to the bath and you should be safe but we've got here sulfuric and nitric acid in the concentration out of uh, 70 percent so it's impossible that alkaline water will stop the, uh, those those acids on your skin again psychology is the most important thing here you when you feel safe you will work every day on 100 percent but if you are scared you don't want to come here to the next day as if you had a choice <laughs> And so we got pillars leading from here. Yes, those pillars went to a storage that is really hard to see because of the forest. The pipe would come out through here. Yes, from this building to the storage. On on top of this, or yes. on, yeah, and it's then not so huge distance as you can see, so those pipes can go above the ground, not in tunnels. So that's what all the pipes, are, that all the poles are for. Yep. So as you can see the middle window on the highest floor, it's a little bit damaged because through that window, Soviet soldiers just on lines took all the stuff from the highest level to the bottom and the lines were overheated so they a little bit damaged. Uh, they pulled them from the highest floor down here to the ground. On lines. Yeah, that's, um... And they took, as I said to you, everything. By everything I mean everything. Also railways and lead floor. When they started to build this factory and those buildings, they got uh, plans made definitely before uh, they came here to this factory. Because in this building, this thing that is on the highest level here, was should be used to transport the nitrocellulose on the highest level in this building but they never use it because they used a, a lift that was just behind this building made from just from wood a wooden floor lift and they put bags on the wooden floor lift and they just transported to the highest level never use this uh, how to say it in I don't even know how to... Outbuilding, outcropping... Something like that. Something, yeah. So there should be a tunnel goes that will be going to the uh, opposite side of this building that is just in front of me. Uh, so uh, to the railway station. So from trains they can put those uh, um, bags with nitrocellulose and transport it to the highest level through that tunnel but they never made that tunnel so the plan of building this of this how the building should look like was made definitely many months maybe years earlier than they came here so they got plans they built it they didn't fault about will we use it in 100 percent that we should uh, as you can see here they just use the wooden lift I was wondering about that one because it's open in one end and then on the other end, it's, it's closed and yeah. turns into a room. And that was the same in both complex one and two, right? Yep. Probably because they've got plans. So as Germans, when plans look There's like this, you should do that. <laughs> There's a plan. We follow the plan. Yeah. It doesn't work. doesn't matter. That's the plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. The Germans are very, very good at following rules. This is the, or at least one of the rail loading bays. It is off the main road, and here you can see the railway tracks. Obviously, they have been disconnected, so they're ending somewhere around here. Of course, the munitions would be packed onto train carts. That we see in some of the smaller places. I will, however, also say this building does look rather new okay so this is the place where uh, the crates with explosive materials been transported on a such wagons as this one this one you will get a uh, uh, rail railway station why i'm saying on a rails like this uh, on wagons like this one because this is an original wagon from 39 that was found a few years ago on the whole zone on the 25 kilometer zone that was used after the second world war and it was used after the Second World War by Poles uh, and it's an original wagon 
made from by the company of MAN in Stuttgart in 39. So definitely that wagon was used to transport explosive materials through the whole factory here in the Second World War. 40 kilometers of railroads yes. within these, so you had a lot of rail stations like this. Yes. But this is the original uh, rail station, this yes. is one, one of them. One of them, many of them were here in the, fact, in the whole factory. Uh, on our zone we've got, now we've got three of those. Uh, in the Second World War were four, one was destroyed. So you'd have rail stations that would come in to off offload? Yes. Would they then load at the same place or would yes. they Here load Here came trains with nitrocellulose that had been transported to the building that had been just before. And when they just uh, reloaded from, uh, un un unloaded from uh, nitrocellulose, they reloaded with nitro, uh, with gunpowder in crates. So the train came here with something and go out also with something. Okay, and the gunpowder would also go to different other smaller factories around Germany? Uh, no, the gunpowder went to another part where they produce smokeless powder. And the smokeless powder from that part went to another part where they made the elaboration and the explosive materials made went to the front. So they would actually move supplies within this 25 yeah. uh, on actual rail, full size rail cars? Yes. That's big. Plenty of explosive materials. Oh yeah. I threw this hole here in this direction. Oh yes, oh, there it is, yes. I wonder if this has been all the way to Russia with stuff and back again a few times. Uh, uh, probably. 1,300, 1,500 wagons from this factory went to Russia. And never came back. Remember I told you for two or three wars the German war machine ran on rail cars? And here's at least an original from the last of those wars. Now one of the really interesting things about this place is there was no fuel used here. The runners with the messages were on bicycles, the trains were coal on steam, and the cars ran out of fuel. Not entirely sure if that was because of restrictions or it was just to keep any kind of fuels out of, of the plant that, to prevent accidents. From the main room down there, from the main room down there, now the hallways are clearly moving upwards. So we're going up to the building with the nitroglycerin mixed with water. So it'll run in pipes downhill. One of the few remains of the Second World War that can be said today to have made a great impression would be engineering, innovation, and most certainly architecture, even if it is architecture of war and explosives. And one must say that this place is a most intricate design layout and must have been a bit of a nightmare for any architect to design it with all the different inputs of all the different things that could not 
coexist or should be anywhere near one another. There are quite a few other explosive factories and chemical plants from the Second World War, and I will endeavor to visit quite a few of them. may even do a live episode from the other DAG factory in Poland, so you all can experience the labyrinth with me live and see me get lost all on my own. In any case, I'm going to continue my journey through World War II architecture because it really is one of the most telling reminders we have of that time. It's true to the saying, we just can't build them like that anymore. I'm also not sure if we want to, but it would be interesting to see if we could. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebnus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.